Welcome everybody to our final lecture. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, a lot of things I have to say, I plan to say today. Let's see if I can accomplish that. And uh, so thank you so much for uh, uh, joining the live lecture and also thank you for watching later. Time for you to start uh, uh, think about your topic or continue thinking about it and uh, come to a to a preliminary idea as soon as you have it. Uh, some of you already have done that or you have been doing that and uh, we have been exchanging a, a number of uh, emails and uh, hopefully during today we will continue that uh, conversation. Eventually the lecture today will also uh, help you to develop forward these, uh, these ideas. The final part of the lecture, just a heads up, uh, I will try to, to summarize very briefly three main uh, main ideas that are currently being uh, being uh, debated uh, among uh, human geography and also involving economic geographers. Slow innovation, mission-oriented innovation policies, uh, and degrow uh, uh, degrow within um, the um, economic growth debate. And we'll try to position this in the context of evolutionary economic geography, more uh, in concrete economic geography as a, as a more broad, broad term. So um, the global value chains and uh, the lecture I have prepared for the global value chains, it probably won't take more than 10 minutes. I'm, and I'm planning to do a recording later today and upload it uh, on the same, uh, same place on the Google Drive. And uh, this is more a call of attention of a particular element that you should bear in mind if you are exploring global value chains. And, uh, and these are more focused on sustainability and the respect towards sustainability principles. So I will do this extra recording uh, today and, and upload it um, and upload it in the same um, in the same drive. So today we'll talk about new directions in economic geography. And for this is important, and you probably some of you already start grasping that I tend to position the discussions within uh, um, sustainability, or I bring a, a number of sustainability preoccupations, mainly social and ecological as well. But all these discussions, the discussions from the past 10 lectures, uh, the discussions currently within economic geography at the present time, and uh, most of the pro projects that I, I am aware of, they have been receiving funding because they underline some of the grand societal challenges that we discuss in the second lecture and they acknowledge the scientific evidence that we are stepping forward in the Anthropocene means a stage within the global or the planetary boundaries uh, that acknowledge that the human impact on earth geology and ecosystems so this is back through a, a large number of scientific scientific findings, for example, global warming. So these discussions regarding the uh, economic uh, landscape, uh, we should place them within the Anthropocene. And also uh, is important to be reminded that we are being these uh, developed or developing societies within a neoliberal society in which the private property plays a role, uh, those that, that hone the means of production. There is also a number of, of uh, um, events leading to the dispossession of property, for example, and primarily in developing societies means that uh, means that uh, local communities that, for example, uh, are entitled to use or benefit the land, uh, they are dispossessed of it in benefit of uh, large uh, multinational corporations and they have to resettle elsewhere with consequences, not only in environmental terms, but also in the social uh, impacts. And, uh, and the labor force is often taken as a, as a commodity. And the production of commodities is with the purpose of, of being, being them being or seeing them placed in the market to uh, exchange a, a value uh, within these commodities, not a direct exchange as used to be in the past. And, and most of the activities, they are profit oriented. Is, uh, my assessment is that in a current 
development of the society, uh, uh, the number of no, non-for-profit uh, um, activities are, even, are every day less and less. And even those that are called non-organizational, uh, uh, non-government organizations, non-for-profit, they also depend of a number of funding schemes and some of these funding schemes are sponsored by private entities. So there's a lot of power relations here to, to understand in this context. And we have the role of the state uh, in innovation policies, in supporting regional development. We have been discussing this quite a lot and we haven't discussed the role of credit as this will be more in an economic uh, uh, and financial um, uh, model. And I try to upload a number of, of uh, uh, more, more critical points of view, mainly books in the All Art platform, and such as this one I, I have in this slide. So the economic geography, the organization of this economic landscape, being this the production, consumption, and distribution, that we should understand all this phenomena within this Anthropocene and the neoliberal society, and understanding all these uh, different, uh, not only concepts, theoretical, but some of them uh, with a strong applicability in practice from different, we should analyze them from different lenses, while we can position our discussion more in the uh, capitalist society, we should be able to acknowledge their impacts, their shortcomings, their impacts in what dimensions, more in the in environmental uh, side or more in the social side, and what what are the means for the socioeconomic transformation of a, a less developed region? So I try to call your attention to embrace a, a different a multidisciplinary thinking, so-called also pluralism to, uh, to be able to tackle certain issues in a more integrative manner. Of course, we cannot cover everything and uh, some of the discussions they need to be, uh, to be, to be, uh, um, be discontinued or we will not be able to embrace all the extent of, uh, of the discussions. And we explore here that many of these elements, they are interconnected, supporting structural change certainly is, uh, requires a number of strategic decisions. On the other hand, these lagging regions, for example, they also need to attract investment. They also need to, to place their labor force and they are also, also deprived of some livelihoods or the local communities are deprived of accessing livelihoods. They are also within this time-based competitions that are a number of dependencies to watch out and a, a lot of, of challenges to try to uh, help them overcome structural issues and eventually place them in the, in the renewal path towards economic growth and the social development, more important. Completely now out of, uh, of, of uh, alignment and uh, the lecture today is a bit eclectic in this regarding. I have a number of slides that come here to uh, reshape some of the ideas and uh, I have done a little of, of a little investigation, uh, really superficial to try to bring a case of, of Tesla. I'm a, I'm a, uh, I believe that some of you, you are very interested in this or automobile sector or the, the, the relationship here between uh, multinational corporations, local economies or uh, interfirm relationships. So I discovered that Tesla uh, plays, uh, plays in the market and plays uh, with local economies slightly then the different context, if I compare this with uh, the strategic coupling of Huawei and the fundamental with Siemens. And, uh, and uh, well, there are few publications covering the, the, or taking Tesla as a case study, and most of them, they are master thesis, master thesis projects. So there is also a possibility of embracing research, uh, trying to, to understand uh, Tesla in the in the context of strategic coupling or global production networks, and uh, Tesla embraces uh, uh, the establishment of strategic partnerships, which we can understand as a, a prime uh, um, a preliminary step, uh, better to say, a preliminary step towards a strategic coupling. Let me remind you that the strategic coupling implies a win-win situation between the transnational corporation, the multinational enterprise, and the local economies. And I, as far as I call the grasp from, from, uh, from uh, uh, the few literature I, I, I encounter, Tesla is not yet there, is not yet in that 
in that stage of finding win-win situations with the local economies. So they are more uh, concerned with building uh, strategic partnerships through joint vendors and alliances with other companies. And one, how they do this, they intend to explore research and developments and then try to, to seek or they seek synergies uh, more regarding in tech in terms of technology and less about uh, about a give and take with the local economy uh, hopefully this this will uh, help to consolidate the idea so uh, the literature i found they classify the the the, the strategic partnership of Tesla as being a, a open innovation or, or following the open innovation principles. And this uh, Chess Pro, uh, I, I believe, um, you find um, the, the book in your in your whole art platform, particularly focused on the open innovation, which I'm not totally familiar about the conceptualization of uh, this open innovation. My understanding is that is fundamental uh, uh, fundamental about an enterprise uh, building a, a relationship with other enterprises with, a, with the intent of supporting their own production, their own uh, industrial system, I will say. So here that we within the open system, they, they, they acknowledge that they don't have to, to embrace all the investigation, all the research and development uh, process. They also uh, no, don't need to contract all the smart people. They can simply establish synergies with other enterprises to, uh, to explore these new technologies, explore innovation, uh, explore innovation without embracing in the full length this, uh, this, uh, this process. So they, they, while I, I I try to, to underline here in terms of if I make a comparison with strategic coupling, uh, I don't find this uh, open innovation aligned very much with the core principles conceptually of the strategic coupling because it, it lacks this win-win situation to or towards the local communities. And uh, Tesla again relies on this open innovation principle and probably this uh, helps also to underline uh, this open innovation means that they try to establish again through all, all uh, alliances, joint ventures, and then with the case with US government, again, they receive uh, uh, a good amount of, of loans to develop their uh, production process. They establish uh, synergies with a number of enterprises such as Panasonic, Daimler for the production of, uh, of the battery packs. And here is the, the fundamentally, which is a, an important component of their, uh, of, their, of their production. And there's a video here explaining the process. Uh, the technicalities are not relevant. What it is relevant is to understand that so there are differences in terms of how these multinational corporations behave in the global production network. So we have Siemens in China, which I consider a well-structured enterprise with a consolidated presence in the market, uh, not only in terms of, of market share in the stock exchange, but also in the mind of the consumers and also of other private actors is a respected enterprise. So they have they embrace uh, they seek synergies with the local community and they cooperate with the governments. While in the context of Tesla at this stage, I'm not saying here that eventually this will not evolve towards a more uh, a more a more strategic coupling uh, conceptualization but at this stage they seek to establish synergies with uh, other uh, other enterprises across the world from europe to to japan so this is uh, only to cover to cover partly uh, what I, I was able to find about uh, about Tesla. If you have some question or, or if you would like to intervene, maybe you have a, a specific knowledge in this regarding, feel free to 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 come in and and and, and share with us. Okay. And um, and again. I'm recapping here the smart specialization strategy as we cut it short in the last lecture. And I will try also to, to, to be succinct at this level and try to point out in a schematic way the, the fundamentals of smart specialization strategy, again, understood here as a regional innovation policy intended to support uh, uh, also regional development in, um, in selected territories. Not all the territories within the European Union, not all member states embrace smart specialization strategy. They, they uh, at, at this moment, as far as my memory helps, only 
143 regions within the European Union have, uh, have been developing smart specialization strategies. And I am aware that uh, countries such as Portugal, they are currently preparing the new smart specialization strategy, which is already, in my point of view, based on what uh, I have been researching, already controversial. When we expect these strategies to last long, it still has to respect the political cycle or the financial cycle of the European Union. And uh, I, I just read some news yesterday that uh, they are now in the process of building a new smart specialization uh, strategy. So I'm not fully aware of the domains of these uh, forthcoming um, uh, strategies or what they intend to cover. Most likely they will align with the Green Deal that we superficially discussed earlier. The three pillars of the smart specialization here are the entrepreneurial discovery, this, this principle of finding a new, a new product to develop new commodity, new goods, or develop a new service, very much based or, or as a follow-up of already established products, goods, or services. So it somehow is, is implementing some new engineering, new, new production processes, and improving it improving it uh, to some extent or by incorporating new technology, for example. And then there is a step of entry, entering the market or entry the industrial system, for example, which could eventually lead to agglomeration, to agglomeration economies, ultimately uh, and primarily to towards the formation of clusters. And uh, eventually, uh, the ultimate goal uh, of a smart specialization strategy is to support the structural change in the regions where they embrace such a strategy, which is very difficult to measure. It's very difficult to grasp the true impacts of these smart specialization strategies, fundamentally when they, they the regions that embrace them, uh, and uh, let me underline again, this is an ex ante conditionality. So for them to be able to apply for the European structural funds, they need to develop such a strategy and not all the member states are entitled to apply for these structural funds because they are already in a different stage of economic growth compromises them to a certain patterns or, or uh, to a certain patterns of development previously was inclusive sustainable and smart development eventually now these again are more aligned with the principles of the of the new grid deal but we can we can have this specialization this smart specialization without a specific policy so territories they can embrace this entrepreneurial discovery they can place then their products or their services in the market, in the new market, more profit table, and eventually support a structural change. Let's try to disentangle this entrepreneurial discovery and there are two other, the two other pillars. So as you may, you may uh, understand uh, as a common sense, the entrepreneurial discovery is about is about finding finding new ways of doing the things, developing one idea towards a new type, uh, a, new, a new business uh, that, that eventually could lead to a renewal of path of paths within local economies uh, can, can completely disrupt uh, existing uh, the existing developing paths depends very much the, the the usefulness and the meaningfulness of uh, of such uh, of such discoveries and here the, the prime focus of the smart specialization is to underline the research and development within this context. So the idea is to, to support support the research and development to the extent that this entrepreneurial discovery is, 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 is impacted. So less than having this discovery happening in an organic manner, the smart specialization tries to somehow to force this discovery by creating conditions to local to regions uh, specifically to develop their research and development activities. And ultimately, again, the goal is to, to accelerate uh, innovation within, the, within these territories. And, uh, and uh, uh, the prime goal he here within this, uh, or the prime conceptualization of the entrepreneurial discovery is acknowledge that something new is possible. It's possible to go from uh, a region focus on produ uh, the production of nails to glasses, or from uh, a traditional uh, textile sector to a more to a more innovative one that incorporates technology in their fabrics, for example, or integrate nanotechnologies in the production of uh, of, uh, of paper, for example. The challenge is to 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 
this entails some challenges the entrepreneurial discovery not all the ideas will lead to new domains to new business to new pets they also have to find to find a, a way to the market to enter the market for the consumption or the industrial system if they are part of the production so the idea needs to find some usefulness this 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 uh, is important to 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 attach a meaning to this uh, to this uh, to this uh, entrepreneurial idea otherwise they won't be able to enter the market enter the market and they can only enter the market when other uh, uh, firms um, other sectors, other research and development entities, for example, acknowledge that meaningfulness. So then they will they will can fully realize that truly potential and eventually lead to agglomeration and uh, and uh, and clusters. This very much in a uh, I will say theoretical although uh, in the the, the, the one of the, the main documents supporting smart specialization are more policy oriented. Uh, uh, in practice is. I will say that this is really challenging to, to, to understand what extent and also diff, very difficult to measure the extent uh, an idea uh, that we can place it within an entrepreneurial discovery goes uh, forward in a process, enters the market and leads to, to an agglomeration. Requires certainly a very in-depth in -depth case study analysis and in-depth in -depth research. And the ideal as the result of this discovery and this entry in the market can lead to, to, the, to, to new windows of opportunity within these uh, local economies. So the ultimate goal is uh, having these, uh, these innovative ideas uh, led by research and development centers supporting a structural change in these, in these territories. And we discussed this at length earlier before. What I, what I want to underline here is that uh, within the literature of smart specialization, they consider four, four uh, domains, four stances of uh, structural chain transition, modernization, diversification, and radical foundation. And again, I found also uh, complex to, to make a, a clear distinction uh, across these four for uh, domains, for avenues of structural change. Transition, probably one that is quite simple to, 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 to disentangle here, is when a new domain emerged from an existing industrial system, the traditional textile, the traditional shoemaking, the traditional automobile that incorporates new technology, uh, the, tries, to, tries to incorporate uh, electrical equipments, for example, uh, batteries, etc. So you may uh, be able to envision this kind of, of, of transition. So there is not there is not a complete disruption of the industrial process. There is the incorporation indeed of, uh, of technology, uh, but to some extent, or the labor force then that goes through some, some kind of, of uh, 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 workshops to be able to to then to, 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 to deal with these new technologies. There is not a complete disruption of the process. There is the incorporation of some improvements that can lead to the transitions. There's a number of cases across, across Europe, from Germany to Southern Europe, for example, regarding the, tech, the textile, but also within the mining sector and the automobile sector as well. So that just try to, to visualize and place yourself uh, some years back, find a traditional, a traditional industrial activity and understanding with this evolutionary perspective, having a time frame is important in this. When we are doing research in evolutionary economic geography, try then to understand the elements that uh, uh, led to this transition within a specific industrial sector. Maybe it impacts only a number of firms, maybe in the process, a number of firms, they they completely disappear from the market. Many others may eventually uh, emerge to support this transition. Uh, Another component, component is modernization, where the introduction of new, for example, technology, uh, biotechnology, information communication technologies disrupts the more traditional processes and eventually lead to, to a more advantaged product or commodity or, or, or service. This happens frequently in the, in the agribusiness sector by incorporating technology in the, in the production of a of food uh, for the protection of crops uh, for the irrigation system in incorporation of uh, of more uh, 
high tech high tech in the in the in the in support of the production but also happens in the large extent of the of the economic geography of the developed developed societies it also happens within developing uh, developing countries and in my previous research helps me to to make the following comment that that there is also this this modernization of agriculture in in southern parts of Africa and in Latin America, but they are often uh, led by multinational corporations, and these often led also to to the what I mentioned in the beginning to the dispossession of um, of property, some of the local communities because of uh, the, the intensification of the agriculture, they have to be resettled uh, elsewhere without the without fair economic uh, compensation so just imagine that they are dispossessed of their land they use that land to produce their own livelihoods and then they will need to resettle elsewhere and sometimes the land where they will be resettled is not fertile as in as uh, in the in the in that um in that main in their main land this also helps a lot across across europe in the, in the fundamentally in the countries where the mechanization of agriculture is already somehow established and uh, still a lot of room to develop it and incorporate technologies in the, into the modernization of, uh, of the agriculture production. What I underline or what I intend to underline here that is important to keep in mind the drawbacks of this modernization. Indeed, the ultimate goal is support the structural change, support economic growth, ideally social development, but be reminded the impacts on the ecosystems and also on the local communities in social in social terms. Eventually also uh, with impacts on the on the on the labor market. And um, another, another, the 3.3, not the 3.2, the diversification, uh, which is also again difficult to 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 make a clear distinction between modernization and diversification. Here, the diversification is is happens quite frequently in the, in all industrial areas of Europe, such as the road area in Germany, for example, where uh, companies try to find find a position that 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 um, that production in the in new markets, eventually more profitable and more attractive markets, or they try to to develop alternative products that can can boost their own own positionality within this market. And often they do this uh, through uh, the lenses of um, constructing regional advantage uh, related varieties. So they invest in in uh, in activities more related to their core. Uh, to their core uh, uh, business model, so we have uh, uh, postal services uh, engaging with with banking services. A number of cases in in Switzerland, Germany, Belgium as well. Uh, we have uh, banks now offering a, 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 a number of of insurance schemes as well. We have a, a sports center or gyms offering also more more alternative forms of uh, alternative means of of. Uh, of, of relaxation, for example, by providing different types of um, of, uh, of uh, group uh, group teaching, etc. So we just try to 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 understand that, that this 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 diversification often results or, or, or results from branching out a core activity, branching out a core business of a specific of a specific uh, corporation. They try to they try to to extend the, that influence uh, through offering new products or uh, or delivering new um, new service and then we have the radical uh, radical foundation or uh, a radical a radical uh, a radical structural change that uh, that should be understood as a uh, uh, that emergence of a completely new domain, a completely new business, probably not even 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 part of sin developing scenarios earlier. So, emerge as the result. I will say also as the result of this entrepreneurial discovery, as, as the result probably as a, some sort of preliminary transition. But they they entered a completely new market by offering fundamentally a completely new service. We are talking about three D printing, and then you can tell me well. Print, printers they already exist for quite some time so so to what extent is it is a completely radical innovation or is not just a transition yeah i mentioned to you indeed 
is is complex to 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 uh, to say that this is okay it's a transition uh, or is a completely uh, radical is a radical innovation that not does not only create a new niche but a completely new market we have the netflix as one example and eventually we'll come to heat up these uh, insurance uh, that is pay per mile insurance so instead of paying uh, of you paying uh, an annual fee for your car insurance then we will be paying per mile or per kilometer as uh, the moment this comes to heat up eventually it will it will arrive and all of these, the three, the sorry, the four pillars of the structural change, they also require a government intervention. And this happens uh, in the European, in some of the European regions, through the um, smart specialization uh, policy, which imp which is an essential requirement to apply for the structural funds. I try to 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 come to a conclusion here of the usefulness of smart specialization more focus on europe just imagine that we have in one local economy in one in one region we have the sleeping giants for example the agri food sector very uh, with with a weak uh, to moderate capacity to innovate we have the excited goblins this is we'll find this terminology in the in one of the publications uh, so we have high tech clusters that are very propense and very prone to innovate and we have the low to uh, low tech small and medium sized enterprises they have to some extent the capacity to innovate but they need something to be able to trigger these innovations so they call them the hungry dwarfs what the, the the role of the smart specialization in this context is to somehow is to organize the system so is to the 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 the, the the philosophical principle of the smart specialization is offering to this regional economy uh, uh, the diff, the same opportunities being them the sleeping giants the exciting goblins or the hungry dwarfs that's the the, the the prime the prime philosophical principle is to organize the territory in a way they can all benefit from the package from the strategy so here the try to, to, this the the, the the literature summarizes in this regarding uh, without an inclusive or integrative smart specialization strategy planned and and, and the result of a of governance arrangements of participation of different actors public and private we left these exciting goblins uh, uh, building uh, and, and designing nice projects they will be able to apply for funding and they went and they will hand it here a founding a founding a cycle that will lead them to continue uh, winning additional funding and com and this will lead to the exclusion of some sectors of activity eventually they will completely disappear and we'll also keep aside those that eventually could enter this innovation path but they still unable to reach to reach or to prepare uh, nice nice projects that the idea of the smart specialization when when it comes to a specific region is to organize the territory so understand this is not possible without uh, building an institutional capacity at, at the end the usefulness in my viewpoint of the smart specialization is this capacity of building uh, uh, institution new institutional arrangements that will then truly support the entrepreneurial discovery and the forthcoming uh, steps entry and structural change if you are interested in these smart specialization strategies a couple of examples uh, from the past from the past years across europe some of them are focused in in the exploring technology and translating this innovation into new businesses some of the uh, countries or regions within the countries they specifically focus in one type of activity such as in finland very much oriented towards the bioeconomy parts of portugal in some regions they try to take take advantage of that what something we have been discussing quite intensively they try to use their regional assets to to embrace a more sustainable means of uh, energy production and others they are they are because that, that that economic system i will say is already more consolidated the goal of the smart specialization in these uh, in these territories is more to to support the governance and and the institutional capacity such as in the in belgium in the case of the of, of uh, urban areas they uh, try to they try to develop cross sectorial policies uh, in the netherlands they try to seek more participation of the citizens and in germany they try to foster decision making in a way that that they they um, 
and some sort of network they, they will be able to act as engaged will be able to apply for additional funding schemes and um, this this uh, same same principle of having the smart specialization not directly focus on on supporting entrepreneurial discovery but more uh, in in boosting the capacity that could eventually lead to this entrepreneurial discovery a case in the region of tuscany where they use the smart specialization strategy to apply for specific funds with the intention of of boosting collaboration and organizational capacity within within the region of Tuscany in Italy. Uh, another example in Finland, completely in a different in a different context, and also a very interesting. I found a, a project. I don't know all the details, but the, the search is out there. If you if this is interest to you, so these cities they came together uh, within the principles of smart specialization and developed a six city strategy. And the goal here is to make the data that they own, Helsinki, Hespo, Vanta, Tamper make the data they, they, they own available to the to the to the regional economy in this case will be different uh, different um, uh, urban uh, uh, urban based economies making this data available so new business will be generated and, and here again uh, the, the the i miss some of the specific details on how this really uh, uh, developed or, or was implemented in practice I, uh, I could grasp that, for example, they have access, so they, they make this data available to the point that they, they uh, uh, transportation companies can uh, understand where the residents are located or where they will be located in future so they can start establishing uh, transportation corridors, for example, or try to assess the cost effectiveness of developing a transportation line to a certain part of, of the city. So they make these they make uh, their data open uh, with the intention to 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 foster or to boost business activities within the domains of smart mobility clean technology and uh, and they take these uh, six cities as a, as a as as a, as a lamps uh, and uh, this is another another branch of the literature within planning they take this it as an urban labs to experiment experiment the potentials of new activities and the, the experimentation is fundamental in the in today's economic geography you will hear if you if you explore this mission oriented slow innovation and and digital that experimentation is fundamental to understand what works better and what uh, works less less effective and uh, some of the critics towards smart specialization, they acknowledge or they call that they need to incorporate more uh, a capacity to deal with foreign direct investment. That that some of these uh, territories, on one hand, they try to push their regional assets through the smart specialization, but at some point they also attract, they intend to attract foreign direct investment and the smart specialization strategy at the current times uh, is not fully able to deal with these uh, with these dynamics or the dynamics created by the global value chains or these direct uh, dynamics of attracting investments and uh, and workforce and also some of the critics pointed out that uh, uh, there is a strong preoccupation from the european union to design nicely and 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 align with the principles smart specialization strategies but they they, they lack mechanisms to truly follow up after the design they, they they lack mechanisms to to assess the truly implementation of a smart specialization uh, strategy at the ground and you see very similar documents across across europe uh, documents uh, similar strategies and uh, that 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 assessing their implementation and their effectiveness in practice is uh, much more challenging. And um, other also part of the challenges, uh, uh, how to overcome some of these challenges to boost to boost mechanisms uh, that could support the implementation and to acknowledge that some of the regional dynamics uh, in economic and social terms that occur within these European territories, they are impacted by by dimensions that are not acknowledged within a smart specialization strategy, such as trust, responsibility, social relationships that exist between uh, between actors, between private actors in one region that could uh, uh, that that could 
support this entrepreneurial discovery without the need to follow through a specific smart specialization strategy. So are, there are a number of factors in the, the implementation of, of the smart specialization strategy. And some authors pointed out that the way to do to overcome these shortcomings is through a multi-scalar coordination, while others acknowledge for this to happen, for this multi-scalar coordination to happen, that the smart specialization strategy should become a more flexible uh, instrument uh, uh, to to uh, to, um, to to allow a more a more uh, to allow some some more dynamics and uh, acknowledge the social elements that impact the organization of the uh, innovation process within um, the regions. And um, then I conclude the part. And uh, before. We still have a, a good a good amount of time to to explore the new directions in economic geography that I I planned today. Do you have any questions regarding the previous slides? And uh, sorry if they sound uh, uh, partly superficial, but the literature, if you are interested in this uh, type of strategies, will help you to to grasp more in detail the concepts uh, that we explored it here. You have also any comments regarding the strategic coupling? Uh, you have, a, if you have another ideas about other enterprises uh, trying to enter the European market or a European enterprise trying to enter the U.S. market, uh, please also feel free. And um, maybe the mm -hmm. the Brexit is an interesting topic for the bank uh, for the bank sector. Um, mm -hmm. So. Do they move to Frankfurt from London or not because they want to stay in the EU or in in the in the yeah, yeah Euro room uh, place in in Europe? Yeah, it's certainly an interesting an in, an interesting case, and also other other companies that move to move headquarters to to Amsterdam or to Brussels or other in other European regions. Yeah, it is interesting. I, I don't have the, the, the knowledge in this specific sector of banking. It's certainly an interesting case to explore the factors that that are behind their, decis their decision to, of, of moving or moving to, to Frankfurt, probably most likely is to remain within the European, uh, the European market and, and benefiting from uh, the, the tax relaxation that exists across uh, the European uh, the European member states and uh, certainly this, this facilitates their uh, their business activities also towards other uh, towards other parts of the world. I just can't think about uh, the different kind of agreements that exist between the European Union and uh, other countries between the European Union and Switzerland between the European Union and the Mercosur Mercosur the countries part some countries in the, in the in Latin America, and these are also these are primarily focused on the, on the on agriculture uh, uh, commodities. Uh, fundamentally, these banks they are in credit institutions, and these multinational corporations they need access to credit to continue developing their business. Is certainly an area of interest to explore. All right then. Uh, we will carry on uh, to the new directions in economic uh, in economic geography, and I'm starting with the uh, slow innovation. So here I shared the um, then we after this we can do a break after the slow innovation. I, I these are the concepts that I found quite interesting and the concepts that uh, were the literature remains short. So so instead of uh, I could simply explore topics. That then uh, topics that if you go on Google Scholar you find tons of of publications, but these are the topics that still a lot of research uh, can still be done. There are a number of gaps trying to explore or slow innovation, the mission oriented uh, uh, policies, and the grow within the the organization of the economic landscape. Uh, there are still a number of gaps that can be can be explored. The principle of the slow innovation, and uh, I pointed out here two important uh, uh, references. First, there is one line of reason that acknowledge that the speed is fundamental to with for innovation to occur. So that that doing the things fast and responding to the to to the market and sometimes responding to to uh, marketing companies. 
and that 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 conduct the market research market research uh, summarizing the, the 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 needs of consumers that there is one strand of reasoning that suggests that doing fast is important to to continue triggering innovation the slow innovation process comes against this uh, this this uh, the need for speed within innovation by acknowledge that slow processes uh, not necess- not not responding to, to the market in an immediate ground and taking more time to develop, it, to, to go from one idea to the potential ap- applicability for a product or services also generates benefits to the local economies. And the, 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 the advocates of social innovation acknowledge that more than speed, the society needs room for exploration, for experimenting what works better in comparison to, to, to uh, what works better in the context of scarcity of resources, which is a fundamental uh, domain when we are talking about uh, slow innovation. So, so they call for reflection, a learning process before advancing to, 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 to the incorporation of, of one idea into the production system. So underlines more, uh, more, more a slowness, a slowness and the advantage of being slow, the advantage of, of taking the time to experiment and really understanding the advantage of a specific of a specific idea and as you may understand this has a more beneficial impact in terms of sustainability more in ecological more in the ecological terms but also in a social in a social dimension because slow innovation relies quite uh, heavily on the social relationships that that could support this slowness within the innovational uh, process and uh, and uh, that the, again the, those that that support or are more focused on understanding the potential of slow innovation again one line of reasoning uh, uh, suggests that what the society needs is innovation that is good for the planet and for people. Of course, I'm not telling that this is this is well. On one hand, this does not sound totally utopic. There there is room. For, for, for innovation to be good for the planet and people, but it's important again to balance the, uh, the pros and cons of, uh, of, uh, of such a process. And they suggest that this um, quick fix and sometimes it's this eat and run innovation to just simply to respond to the market need or one science fits all, they are uh, uh, out of the context, out of the current context and out of the real needs of the society that we need we need a better understanding of of uh, of the, the 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 resources that exist and can be employed to support such uh, such an innovation and I suggest that uh, that more than 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 having this innovation as forcing new uh, uh, forcing the the, the the development, the design of new products or the establishment of new services, they should work or innovation processes as a result of research and development, they should work more as a, a guiding principle that eventually will lead to to uh, to, uh, to uh, new means uh, of production and um, new means of production, but taking as a as a guidelines as 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 a some, as a starting point, not as a hand point, not having an innovation process as the hand point within the, within the process. Uh, so we have one line of reasoning uh, that are more focused on criticizing the current the speed or, or the, 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 the acknowledging that the speed is good for the innovation. And an alternative line of reasoning uh, is that is is the one that that. Uh, considers that urban areas, they are the, the ideal territories for innovation to uh, to grow, and they consider they consider the, and this is often an unspoken assumption that innovation is essentially an urban phenomenon. So it comes comes why is unspoken assumption is comes without much questioning. Uh, well, until recent times, now uh, as as we researchers also need to embrace different types of domain domains and doing our research uh, doing conducting research that is timely this 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 assumption is currently being criticized as well innovation can also occur uh, outside of urban areas so innovation unfolds also in the peripheral territories this goes against the creative city if eventually we are aware of this terminology by richard florida very well known that innovation goes against 
this idea that innovation or idea or assumption that innovation is 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 uh, is uh, can only be possible within large metropolitan areas because of the uh, um, soft and hard infrastructures that exist and also goes against that uh, that uh, the patents and new products they got uh, uh, they got mainly introduced in large cities so a number of critics now come come to 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 place their findings against this assumption that innovation is essentially an urban phenomenon so most of these critics, and I pointed out here a number of them, and I particularly like the work of uh, of uh, Hank Meyer in um, in Bern, Switzerland, uh, and she she's currently developing slow innovation in uh, small and medium sized enterprises, and underlines that innovation also occurs in known urban geographies, and they also they also are. are uh, responsible for some innovations and they eventually they have all the potentials to be to be considered as a as a as a territories that also matter you will come across in the literature uh, uh, the definition of of, uh, uh, of not only lagging regions and they consider these lagging regions that places that they that they don't matter they don't matter in the current context of the neoliberal society this number of researchers they come to criticize this stand this line of reasoning by suggesting that innovation also occurs in peripheral territories. They also have the capacity to innovate, certainly in different domains in comparison to large metropolitan areas, but they do also have the capacity and, and the means to uh, innovate within a plethora of, uh, of activities. They are not particularly well connected, but they benefit from some for they benefit from some uh, the from some factors such as the social networks that can boost uh, innovation and entrepreneurial discovery as well and uh, some explanations explanations uh, for, for for this innovation in the, in the peripheral region so they primarily take advantage take advantage of the social and network proximity not necessarily the the proximity between between the other multinationals enterprises that are often located in um, in large in large in large metropolitan areas but they take advantage of small uh, in a more constructive and organic man manner not necessarily as a response as, as as a force but they 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 try to to build on local knowledge build on local knowledge to explore eventually uh, innovative ideas and often this uh, occurs uh, within environmental sustainability i'm talking about here for example uh, nature oriented tourism activity or tourism activity they are that seek to be more environmental friendly uh, innovation within uh, the agri businesses uh, more focus on the production of um, of food and again a number of uh, more nature oriented activities but there are also other examples that try to innovate in more uh, in more traditional textiles and they do this often by relying on the on the founding schemes but not the prime goal is not necessarily to in to provide an immediate response to the market uh, but to 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 try to boost the regional economy by their own means that what what we what we call in regional development policies seeking an endogenous organic development and they often invest in these areas that they are overlooked by the uh, the large uh, the large metropolitan uh, metropolitan areas what i uh, the point here of criticism is is, is uh, based also on my on my recent readings it is an area of research that i'm trying to embrace currently is that uh this also also we have to bear in mind that it's not always possible to embrace slow innovation because not all slow innovators if we want to call slow entrepreneurs have the means to sustain themselves in the market to some extent they will need or the support of of, of a credit institution or the support of of the government through funding schemes or any other uh, governmental institution so is also important to to understand the pros and cons, the advantage and disadvantage of such a slow innovation pro, uh, process. So, the slow innovation as a as a concept within the economic geography literature tries to counteract the mainstream geography innovation that. Uh, uh, that re relies on the assumption that innovation occurs in these more pro prosperous or advanced urbanized areas. 
they suggest that innovation also occurs very much based on enhancing local knowledge and the regional potentials or local potentials also occurs in small and medium-sized towns, some of them still lagging behind in terms of economic developments or in low-grow and low-income regions. Not necessarily in Europe, but also elsewhere in the world. And they, they, they emphasize that, that these places, they matter, uh, they matter within the economic within the economic geography uh, landscape. So they matter and they play a role sometimes in supporting the economy of these more advantaged regions by providing specific, specific, search, uh, specific products. Just think about agricultural commodities that coming from these uh, uh, small and medium sized uh, uh, territories that supply uh, the larger the larger cities. So the literature suggests that they, they can they can they can play a role in these economic dynamics of larger uh, territories and in often in the face of a crisis or, or uh, external shocks these small territories they tend to perform better in terms of uh, uh, population and economic growth they rely on the on the on the uh, small size social networks to 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 secure their their development this is also not entirely uh, easy to to understand in reality or this can can happen more in uh, in uh, 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 countries more advanced in terms of economic developments and uh, and uh, regions located in countries with uh, that still still uh, still having a more challenging means of securing that economic growth certainly these small small uh, territories or territories in the periphery that will encounter more difficulties to secure these performance that they pointed out here in terms of population and economic growth. But partly the literature underlines that these, these, these lagging regions and small medium-sized enterprise, they still matter to secure these cohesive regional development patterns and they, they need to be continue supported as they play a role in securing these social dynamics also also uh, that are fundamental for other urban regions to prosper towards the future and they also call to uh, because some of these lacking regions are located in um, in southern parts of Europe, for example, is important if we are doing conducting research in this domain to pay attention to the uh, to the research that is uh, currently being developed there, no in uh, and published often in a non English academic journal. So this is another domain that uh, economic geographies geographers and human geographers are concerned is about paying attention to uh, known English literature and the extent they provide important findings to understand these dynamics uh, involving lagging behind regions. And uh, again, stepping a, li a little bit outside of these lagging behind regions and small and medium sized enterprises, and this aligned with, with concepts that we had been discussing, we discussed earlier the governance and uh, and the line also with concepts within evolutionary economic geography, they rely on their local values. They pay attention to their local history and culture, and they tend to value these to support their economic activity. They embrace a more community-based economic development, uh, and they rely a lot on their uh, grassroots, and they seek the development of more sustainable-oriented activities. This in terms of uh, uh, an overarching conceptualization. Trying to bring here the contradiction between the fast innovators that they try to, to respond again, respond to the markets in the in the in the in the fast and forward uh, manner. We have the example of, of the fast uh, fast uh, um, fast fashion. And so they try, these fast innovators, they try to respond to the calls from the market, uh, the calls from the consumers, and often they respond to trends, as you may uh, uh, understand this as, as, as is part of, of the current society. They try to respond to buzzwords or to trends. And so they rely in knowledge that, that uh, very quickly will disappear, while the, so, the slow innovators, they rely on the so-called slow decay information and knowledge, uh, information and knowledge that tends to last longer in the market. So the core preoccupation is not to respond to any trend, but is to, to, take, the, to take and build on the true the potential of this uh, uh, local uh, knowledge. So, and the slow innovators within the slow innovation process, they rely more on the on strategic oriented uh, 
uh, decisions. So they tend to to invest or uh, invest on on the pants that will sustain them towards the future and not uh, this contradicts them contradicts or, or opposes the fast innovators that uh, primarily think uh, think in responding in responding is a more a hit and run exercise than one that is uh, strategically oriented both have, have advantage and disadvantage and if we embrace research in this domain is important to understand uh, understanding these uh, these uh, these uh, these these, these points of advantage and disadvantage of, of both. Uh, the literature suggests that the slow innovation uh, is more aligned with the current discussions within sustainability transitions or how to transform the economy towards a more uh, sustainable patterns of development. So if we explore economic geography aligned with the sustainability preoccupations, slow innovation is a concept that is currently emerging quite, quite, quite intensively. And the slow innovation, because really relies on this um, slow decay of information and knowledge, uh, the literature suggests that is, is more prone to creativity because you are not forced to provide a response within a specific deadline tomorrow after tomorrow because otherwise maybe this, this buzzword or this trend on social media, maybe the hashtag will disappear because there is more time to experiment or truly understand what type of resources you can bring in to support the, the, the to support your idea, they tend that is more open to uh, this exploration of the of the, the creativity, and they have more potential to ex to, to 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 really propose ideas that can contribute to uh, to to the real needs of uh, of the society, and these are primarily related in the to uh, in um, with addressing the grand societal challenges. A couple of examples here. This happens a lot within the health sciences, but also happens within the garment industry. If we think some of the enterprises that rely uh, on, on this slow innovation to respond to the market, so they indeed respond to the market, but they respond to a market that is now more conscious about the environment is more conscious about conscious about respecting respecting ethical principles within the labor market so they try to provide or their goal is to provide safer safer more uh, appropriate equipment that will last long that will uh, satisfy the consumer for a longer period of time so they are not pressure pressured by time, but they are pressured by a call for more quality and durability. This is currently a, a subject of research involving different type, different uh, enterprises within the garment uh, industry, uh, just to name only a few, Colombia, for example, um, uh, the North Face, and uh, the other one I'm skipping, the name is failing me now, was based in California. Well, I will come to that to that later. So, is the garment industry in specific the one that is specialized in the in the design of 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 garment or um, or complementary equipment for specific sports activities? They quite they embrace this slow innovation process because they try to fill a niche within the market that calls for these more sustainable, more uh, long lasting uh, uh, products. Hopefully you grasp uh, what I intend to say. And this uh, plays well with uh, two concepts within, uh, within regional development that is territorial autonomy. So the slow innovation aligns well with the territori territorial autonomy. See this capacity of these small, medium sized towns or uh, lagging behind regions to explore paths of development that that embrace their own capacity that rely essentially or primarily on their regional assets so they enter these endogenous development dynamics in contrast to a more uh, to a regional determinism means that um, regional development processes that are primarily influenced by outside forces or for indirect investment or other types of regional policies that tend to or call them to follow a certain development path. Eventually, we can have a, a, a critical thinking involving smart specialization strategies if we embrace these two concepts of territorial autonomy and regional determinism to what extent a smart specialization strategy can really uh, be considered as a place-based policy intended to support endogenous development dynamics when the regions that uh, are uh, asked to comply with the principles 
need to respond to the guidelines and eventually part of the of their their uh, uh, economic activity will be uh, neglected so any questions on the slow innovation all right then then feel free to to drop a, drop a, some question later if you have it and then um, we'll uh, go through the mission oriented innovation but do you feel like uh, making a break here a short break or uh, shall i carry on okay i carry on or i do a break nothing so i can i guess i let me see the chat okay then i will carry on um, I will carry on with the mission-oriented innovation policy, which I found very attractive and interesting to explore. It's not necessarily a new concept, it's, it's, uh, it builds on previous research, but now is becoming a, a, more, a more hot topic within economic geography because of the current discussions within the, the the transition to the Anthropocene, uh, to, to in the context of addressing or the need to address the grand societal challenges and uh, securing economic development within planetary boundaries. And again, I rely here on the work of Mariana Mazzucato, which, which is very insight if we are exploring the mission-oriented innovation policies. At, uh, at, at, uh, um, at, at the beginning, it's important I acknowledge here that there are a number of references that are critical towards the mission-oriented innovation policies. And here in the next slides, I primarily focus on a more sympathetic view towards the uh, mission-oriented innovation policies. Again, the mission-oriented policy uh, is currently placed within the debates of economic geography and regional development uh, overall. Uh, as a way, as a, as a, as a way, as a, as a policy trying to address specific uh, grand societal challenges involving sustainability, involving energy supply, trying to to overcome uh, the process conducting to uh, uh, or mitigating the climate change, overcoming process leading to the global warming, supporting health and well-being within a society, and finding ways to uh, to um, have have uh, a more sustainable approach to uh, within the economic development or the economic development that that uh, or economic development that minimizes its um, its uh, social ecological uh, footprint so the mission oriented innovation policy responds or tries to respond to these to these grand challenges by identifying and articulating concrete problems that can then galvanize production distribution and consumption patterns across different sectors so it's important to, to uh, within this mission oriented that recognize that economic growth uh, is not only a rate but also a direction that that means that, that the goal uh, uh, of the mission oriented innovation policy is not to contribute to a quantitative uh, uh, to a quantitative statistic to the GDP but understand that economic growth is a direction to achieve something else is a direction to support social development and not as the final final stage of 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 of, 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 of a policy that innovation requires these experimentations requires requires a, a, a risk taking attitude and this of course also requires that uh, credit institutions or, or um, funding schemes uh, embrace a more flexibility approach and 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 can embrace this risk taking within uh, the innovation uh, within the innovation processes again because this is this is I'm bringing here the source of Mariana Mazzucato. They under, she underlines the role again of the state in supporting almost as as a, a embracing this co-creation process. The, the the state plays a key role in this mission oriented innovation policies by not only uh, paving the way or 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 offering offering uh, uh, funding schemes to the to potential actors but also in shaping the market uh, towards a more sustainable uh, sustainable manner and uh, the mission oriented policy uh, underlines the need to embrace innovation through a bottom up a bottom up approach so a number of 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 sectors 
sector should work as a pillar of this uh, mission-oriented innovation policy. And certainly the example will bring this into the context. And the missions, uh, they require necessarily a consensus building within the civil society. They require the consensus involving public and private uh, and public and private actors. So this is this is fundamental. As I said, the mission-oriented uh, policy is not something new as exists in the past and currently is getting a different is being reshaped reshaped by a number of researchers coming from a different uh, different uh, uh, file, uh, embracing different philosophical principles and also from different disciplines one of the examples that mariana mazzucato points out is the mission of placing the man at, uh, uh, in the moon, the Apollo mission, as the, is the prime example of a mission-oriented uh, innovation policy, so a number of activities uh, uh, developed to support this mission, uh, aeronautics, robotics, text, textiles, and nutrition. So, so the, 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 to fulfill this mission, a number of innovations, they were, they were forced to occur so that the mission could take shape. Another example, uh, more more up to date, involves the energy transition in many of the societies, such as in Germany, where the number of to, to truly embrace or to truly to truly uh, see the implementation of this energy transition at the ground requires requires the involvement of a large number of actors. It requires innovation across sectors, not only. In that those that are directly linked to the energy sector, but also across the society, from the transportation sector to 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 supplying a, to to the heating system in households, for example, this may involve a complete reorganization of the hard infrastructure in our in our cities. So, as you may understand, involves involves uh, to, to so. If you understand, so the mission is to support the transition to more efficient means of energy production and consumption to achieve this mission is necessary first is a long-term process it should be strategic it should involve different types of the society and it should be built from the bottom bottom up and this requires uh, reaching a consensus building again uh, it's important to embrace here both both sides the positive and the negative and the negative i mean more the more critical yes this is nice to say and nice to place it here in the slides or in the or in the in the in the written form but it's important to well to truly have uh, a higher engagement across uh, across actors is 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 definitely very challenging i see this mission oriented um being able to take shape in practice in countries with already a consolidated practice in terms of bottom-up development, uh, such as in the Nordic countries, parts of Central Europe as well, and at a small at a small scale, I, I see less capacity or less potential in the mission-oriented policies at the national level. See, this certainly will require years of preparation off the ground. Off the ground, anyway, we have uh, uh, and these energy strategies at the national level in Norway, in Germany, in the Netherlands. And, uh, and um, the ultimate goal of the mission is to support this energy uh, transition. So the, mission, uh, the, the meaning of this slide here is that this mission oriented to some extent here plays well with with a uh, with a concept of uh, of slow innovation it relies relies on exploring carefully the ways uh, the different ways uh, what is really needed so a specific objective can be achieved being this energy transition or any other requires also a lot of experimentation from the bottom up again from from the from the pillars of the society and is more they suggest that is more because it implies doing the things in a more uh, in 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 the in the in a more passive somehow in a more passive manner but with a specific goal in mind it opens up uh, a space for serendipity for the something to occur without necessarily being looking uh, looking for for it partly of the literature suggests suggests that this can occur other other suggest that the mission oriented it requires also this engagement of uh, institutions to really 
in a way that 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 can keep all the actors on track to really reach that specific objective to 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 accomplish that mission in the end just imagine that this is about accomplishing a specific a specific match a specific mission uh, in in yeah, in different in different in different contexts so the mission oriented is not necessarily about throwing funds but but providing the means of doing of doing the things in a specific way, in a way that leads to the accomplishment of this mission. A number of examples in Germany here, uh, uh, in the in the in this in this specific um, in specific reference, and we can understand partly of these uh, new trends within economic geography, uh, green economy, green jobs, jobs oriented to to. Uh, to the youth, for example, this 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 uh, concept of circular economy, concept slash slash uh, policy process supporting the circular economy as being uh, part of this mission oriented policies that they 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 can be defined as a, a systematic public policy that draw on frontier knowledge to attain specific goals. So relies on the on the on information and knowledge, embraces a more embraces experimentalism and slow innovation with a goal of of reaching uh, with a with a prime aim of of accomplishing specific uh, specific objectives and uh, and we have this this uh, the green economy try to 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 lead the economy to a more uh, environmental friendly uh, or reduce the footprint of economic activities um, try uh, green jobs or jobs targeting the youth to counteract the grand challenge of the aging population for example so that is always a, 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 the 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 innovation policy that that will be supported through a mission oriented policy the aim is to counteract Contract a challenge, uh, a challenge that exists in the in the in the society. Okay, is that's that this can can occur in different in different in different manners. Uh, the, the 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 literature points out that the what the elements that are fundamental for a mission to 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 take shape to take shape in a, in reality at the ground they have they have to be well defined. Uh, and certainly, if they are not well defined, they will probably uh, won't be able to succeed in implementing their principles. They they should focus on 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 creating not not only a, a specific uh, a specific innovation, or they should not uh, in, invest in one specific research and development area, but they in, should embrace a more portfolio approach. So entails a number a number of projects should be developed so that the can the mission can be um, uh, accomplished and also implies again investments across different sectors what the literature suggests at this reaching a green economy and supporting circular economy won't be uh, possible without the support of different sectors of the uh, of the society and of course, this also requires the commitment of different type of, of actors and also the, commi the commitment of policymakers is necessary to build the ground so that the, the, all these projects that eventually be developed to sustain, to support the mission oriented, need to find their ground, need to find the political support and need to find the support within uh, the private sector as well and also within the society. The society also needs to understand that the way forward is to embrace that, that is to embrace more, uh, to embrace clean energy uh, means. So is, is this, as you may imagine, takes, is, 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 over, is, is an overarching strategy. It requires, uh, it requires a long-term process to, um, to be implemented in practice. It also implies a culture of, of experimentation and risk taking very much associated with a slow innovation process and think out of the box. Very easy to say, very difficult to apply in practice. What truly really means thinking outside of the box. And Mazzocato provides the example of, uh, uh, of addressing the sustainable development, development goals. And uh, she proposes this, this uh, emission oriented framework where where different different projects they have their own submission I will call it, but all together they will then uh, help uh, 
the accomplishment of the full the full mission in this case will be the personalization of the sustainable development goals but as i mentioned too in the second lecture there are trade-offs and synergies the development the the applicability or operationalization of one goal can lead to trade-offs to negative impacts in other goals so it's important to understand the trade-offs and how to transform these trade-offs into synergies so a theoretical framework which i found very useful if you think about sustainable development goals or other grand societal challenges and uh, and uh, the example provided here is uh, the accomplishment or the personalization of the sustainable development goal number 14 life below water and how to uh, for example uh, uh, move towards a plastic free ocean so let's understand that the, the final mission here of the sustainable development goal 14 is is as a plastic free ocean so this requires a number of innovations it requires uh, uh, research and development specifically focus on achieving uh, on achieving this mission this won't be uh, this won't be possible without the support of different sectors without the support of policymakers and without the support of the civil society as uh, as well and uh, Again, we are not talking about the mission oriented. It's not about a, a linear line of development in which we have a starting point and the goal that is a plastic free ocean. There are a number of sub projects or sub missions that are fundamental to reach the final goal. And the diagram specifically summarizes this, uh, all what I've been uh, telling here before. Let's see if I can go through this. So, to truly reach, reach the final mission, a clean oceans the plastic free ocean is necessary to involve the chemistry sector uh, artificial intelligent technology social innovation processes this implies boosting uh, the consciousness uh, and the, the attitude of uh, of ourselves citizens and as a consumers it implies the design or, or, or reformulating the, the design of products it implies probably changing uh, waste management policies within our cities and regions and uh, this won't be possible to be achieved without developing specific projects that all together per se independently they won't be able to to have any effective uh, um, then practical effect at the ground but then taken all together and if built based on button up solutions they then they will certainly pave the way to reach to accomplish to accomplish the mission that is to uh, reach a clean ocean so a mission oriented implies a well a well defined the target measurable and time bound time bound goals the measurement is important so you can measure the the, the production of plastic uh, within a specific uh, within a specific city for example this is possible to measure because then they collect the plastic through different means and they place this plastic elsewhere so this is something that can be quantified and quantify is important to understand if the mission is being accomplished or, or not uh, or not and the mission oriented implies that that this mission is of social relevance it also is also important to involve the private sector but in a way they can also fulfill their business expectations it needs to be ambitious but simultaneously realistic and sometimes this is difficult it is a difficult trade-off it's not always possible to 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 have to be ambitious and and be realistic at the same time or develop solutions that really can be applied in practice and implies uh, also a cross-disciplinary uh, innovation process involving different domains of, uh, of the society. So this is the, the mission-oriented, which is uh, gaining ground in terms of research in economic geography, and uh, and I find uh, and I find it uh, uh, with with an interesting potential to explore uh, to explore uh, the organization of the economic uh, landscape with the core preoccupation of uh, um, minimizing the environmental footprint of the economic activities. Any question on this on this mission-oriented policy? And uh, the literature uh, you have in your uh, OLAT platform covers much more in detail these uh, the core elements of the mission oriented, and uh, not only from Mariana Mazzucato, but also other other researchers, um, which will uh, then help you to 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 shape the, to shape some of these uh, some of these concepts. 
Another current debate aligned with sustainability transition, so it is the transition to more sustainable uh, uh, manners of production and consumption, involves the debate uh, within the DGRO. And the DGRO is also, uh, although is, is a uh, is gaining again is similar to the mission oriented is, is uh, gaining track within economic geography research is not necessarily a new concept and emerge within a society as a social movement uh, with a prime goal of fighting against the the, the more capitalized the neoliberal development system of the society so puts at the, uh, at, at the cause the core center of the grow are social and environmental preoccupations the need or the desire to to build social environmental uh, more social and environmental futures futures and finds the decro finds it finds its roots in the more in the in the in, in the act Activist, activist movements, activist movements, and also more, more critical uh, points of view within uh, within uh, scientific within scientific research, and the part of the literature uh, underlines that uh, Tigro is uh, uh, is is, is a, a possible way to repro politicize debates about social economic development. So part of the literature uh, uh, within, within the economic development uh, places the economic forces more at more more at the within the market sphere from the side of private actors where the uh, public domain, the political sphere should not play any role. We have been discussing that Although in this context of a neoliberal society, many of the profit-oriented activities that exist in the US and Europe and elsewhere, they uh, benefit from a number of interventions from the public sector, directly or indirectly, through funding or through the, the inv investment inf infrastructures, yet the decisions are mainly uh, dominated by uh, incumbent interests or are dominated by the private sector. Those advocates from the DGRO suggest that is important to bring back to the political sphere the decisions, the, the core decisions about the economic development within a society. Otherwise, won't be possible to develop the to develop the, the the planet within the planetary boundaries by respecting by respecting the social and eco, uh, the social ecological systems that that sustain the life on Earth. And uh, and so part of the the comments are. Uh, part of, of the literature within the ghetto goes against this development as money and others suggest that this, this others point out more instead of play of relying heavily on this critic towards a neoliberal they place the degro as an alternative to economic development so they provide more useful uh, useful guidelines or useful policy recommendations to to reshape the society so again, this uh, decro goes against the the the, the, um, the exclusion of of uh, the political uh, from the from the economical decision making, and uh, the decro appears as this an attempt to uh, repoliticize the debate on the on the needed social ecological transformation, and it underlines the disagreement with current trends of development and it tries to provide uh, the uh, new alternatives. Yet, if you do a research on Google Scholar, for example, you will find a couple of already interesting uh, empirical evidence on the TGRO, but most of the debates still very much uh, within a, a more a more theoretical domain of from Schneider. For example, they rely. They still very much in the in the more uh, theoretical discussion about the true potential of the group. There are already a number of uh, of good examples, and these examples try to underline that that balance economic growth with the protection of the social ecological systems is possible. Uh, they still lacking, in my point of view. Lacking the true means of achieving this, this degree is is still is still unclear to me and for, for many other researchers as well how to 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 balance this this economic growth and need to to offer uh, jobs to the population how to secure economic development and at the at the same time uh, reach the ecological ecological goals. So the prime principle of the degro is based on this decoupling process between the environment and the economic growth uh, and suggests that both can still prosper 
in a balanced, in a more balanced manner, and the development of economic growth should not uh, degrade the ecological ecological systems and the preservation of the ecological system should not compromise the economic development. Reaching this in practice, it still uh, it still is rather complex. So this is one of the streams of the degrowth research focus on environmental principles. Others they focus among um, among other other streams of research, they focus more on the on the on the having the degrowth in support of the uh, quality of life and well being, and here they underline that is important to embrace a degrow uh, way of thinking in economic development and go against these fast and uh, sometimes furious uh, ways of of, uh, of of production such as the fast fashion and they provide uh, more alternative means to to counteract these these fast oriented innovation processes that lead to to uh, fast patterns of consumption this to be achieved uh, requires uh, a number of uh, change, changes in terms of uh, how we behave also as a, as a consumers. And uh, uh, among many other subjects I could bring here, I bring uh, uh, some of a comparison between the degrowth principles and sustainability transitions. That's this, this, this uh, the, the, okay, we have, I have been discussing a number of concepts that support the sustainability transitions, how to embrace uh, economic growth in a more Sustainable man, man, manner, social, economic, and environmental, and there are a number of 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 similarities between the degrowth concept and sustainability transitions. Both rely on, on the need to change production and consumption patterns. Without a true change of the habits of the consumers, we won't be able to 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 move from a fast. Uh, 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 a fast uh, society to a more slow, uh, a slow uh, development that relies heavily on local knowledge and fulfilling specific needs at a, at a given time, not to place the products in the market just to 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 fulfill to fulfill some trend. So that fitting the production to the consumption is a, certainly a necessary a necessary way to move towards the grow and then embrace a sustainability transitions. So they both require a, a judgment uh, of the products of the service and of the systems. It is important that consumers understand the benefits and the, and the disadvantage of, of, uh, of consuming a specific product, understanding the disadvantage or, or the truly impacts, for example, of consuming meat that lead to deforestation in, in some parts of the country. They require the, the, the both require the, a dramatic change in the terms of the structure, how the economic system is organized. That's what I try to point it out to here. Both embracing the growth and embracing sustainability transitions implies a serious structural change that goes across sectors and grows uh, and goes uh, across across different uh, levels of governance national, regional, local, public and private and semi public and semi private and also involves needs to involve the society because without changing consumption pattern patterns uh, changing production without changing the consumption patterns that that won't be uh, realistic so and both they rely on using this technology and using the innovation to fulfill societal functions to fulfill specific needs and not simply to respond to the calls of the market and um this is uh, basically the new directions in economic geography. I have been discussing them. They underline this localism and the regionalism of supply chains. They underline the ways of doing production, consumption, and distribution in a more sustainable manner. And uh, within ideal, within the planetary, within respecting the planetary boundaries. And I underline here this time for you to start crafting your research topic for your essay. And uh, you know that I'm here to support you the best, the best I can in German or in English. So uh, sorry that I already two minutes pass after the hour. I would like to say I have enjoyed these 11 lectures it has been a very fruitful uh, module. And uh, I apologize for some uh, some uh, lack of clarity in one or another concept. And uh, I hope you also have enjoyed and find it an uh, uh, enriching experience for your learning uh, process. I wish you all the best and we stay in touch. And feel free to, to drop any comments at any stage.
uh, today uh, and tomorrow. Thank you.